let me go start the live. Okay, welcome everyone. We're excited to have this chapel for our December. I hope everyone had a great Christmas. Shall we begin with a word of prayer? Um, Pastor, would you? Yes. <clears throat> Let us all pray. Our Heavenly Father God, we thank you so much for your love and for your grace, and especially that you have watched over us for the last year of 2022 and given this opportunity to prepare for 2023 by worshiping you in spirit and in truth. For this, we give you all honor, glory, and thanksgiving. The last few years, Father God, have been very tumultuous and difficult. And especially in the last year, we've experienced many hardships and trials in our finances, in our ministries, in our families, in every aspect of life, yet that you have kept us until now, that you have allowed us the opportunity to reflect through prayer and through your word so that we may testify of the sanctification we have in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Again, we have all honor, glory, and thanksgiving. You have brought us through a blessed Christmas. And as we welcome the year of 2023, let us be able to settle our accounts well for this year. Let us be able to lay down our pride, lay down our own thoughts, lay down everything before you to truly repent. And in experiencing the grace that we have through Jesus Christ, the gospel of forgiveness, the gospel of eternal life. Let us be able to testify of that gospel where we are in the ministries where you have placed us so that we can declare your kingdom and be your children who is able to see your kingdom come. We pray that through this devotional service today that you will be with us. May it provide for us, Father, spiritual strength and resilience to be able to continue to do the good work that is in the service of your church. May this blessing, Father God, be remembered through your gospel and through the history of redemption for now and forever. And this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It is my honor and joy to introduce today's speaker, our president, Dr. Reverend Jeffers Park. Uh, he is a candidate of PhD program in, at Liberty University currently. And he has received a D Doctor of Ministry at Berry Theological Seminary and Master of Arts in Evangelical Theological Seminary, Master of Divinity at Berry Theological Seminary again, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration and Economics at University of Central Florida. Currently, he is serving as a president at, and professor at Berry Theological Seminary. And he is also a pastor at Charism Hope Presbyterian Church in Georgia. He has served as a pastor and evangelist at Shiloh International Missions at Pyongyangjae Church in Korea. So we're so excited to hear his special message. I was already excited to when when I say uh, when I saw his title, I was really really uh, looking forward to hearing this message. Today's word of life comes from Exodus chapter 40, verses 17. Now in the first month of second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was erected. And this is the word of God. Amen. Amen. So the title will be, Let Us Prepare the Tabernacle for the New Year. I hope we and pray that we will be all receiving great grace. Thank you so much, uh, Evangelist uh, and Professor Kim for the kind introduction. Uh, I will share my screen now. 
Uh, and as our evangelist had presided for us, the title of today's brief message is Let Us Prepare the Tabernacle for the New Year. Uh, and we had read from Exodus chapter 40, verse 17, but I bring it up again. And I would like for us to really consider what it is that this verse is saying. Now, in the first month of the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was erected. Uh, now, this is in the last chapter of Exodus, and it is documenting what Moses is doing. And if you look at the book of Exodus, uh, on the subject of the tabernacle, there are no less than 13 chapters of Exodus's 40 chapters dedicated to describing the tabernacle. There are chapters 25 through 31, as well as 35 through 40. And chapter 40 concludes with the building of the tabernacle. Exodus chapter 1 begins with the state of Israel's slavery in Egypt, their persecution, their tribulations, their trials under the Egyptian regime. The Israelite people are kept as slaves. But by the grace of God, who performed signs and wonders, miracles, he gave his word to his people. He assured them that he was going to keep his covenant, that they will come to the promised land with the covenant made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we see the process of their exodus from Egypt. And the highlight of this exodus, the conclusion, is the tabernacle is built and the people are now experiencing the glory of God. It is not just Moses himself who is interacting with God now, but the whole nation of Israel is able to participate with God through worship to experience his signs, his wonders, and the workings of his word. But what's most significant, I shouldn't say most significant, but the significance that I want to emphasize today is that when the tabernacle was erected, it was erected in the new year. Coming out of the exodus, that first year, how difficult must the Israelites have been? Excited, surely, to be free from slavery, but then they continued to be persecuted. They were hungry, they were thirsty, they still had to interact with other nations and tribes. They had to struggle with their own idolatry. Yet, after this first year, in the new year, the first month of the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was erected. So for us who experience so many troubles, so many events, so many issues, yet we still keep the word of God. We still worship him. Do we not also need to reflect on how we have come up to this point so that we can worship our glorious God in the new year? That we may have hearts of repentance and that we can understand spiritually what it means to erect the tabernacle. That we can be these saints and ministers to proclaim this gospel. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. So. If we look at Exodus chapter 40, verses 1 and 2, Moses didn't do this on his own, but God commanded him, saying, on the first day of the first month, you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You see, it's not just a coincidence that Moses gathered all the materials and put everything together, and when everything was done, it was done on the first day of the first month. God actually commanded him, you will do this on the first day of the first month. You will do this for the new year. So it is a command of God. And if we look at when the tabernacle was first discussed, we have to go back to Exodus chapter 25. And if we look at verses 8 and 9, I will read it for you. Let them construct a sanctuary for me that I may dwell among them, 
according to all that I'm going to show you as the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furniture, just so you shall construct it. So God is giving very specific instructions. Now, at this time, uh, in Exodus 25, when Moses is receiving these instructions, this is during his sixth ascent of Mount Sinai. Uh, now, we have uh, further studies on this. We'll touch upon them in future uh, chapels and in our courses. But Moses went up Sinai eight times in the sixth ascent. And this is about uh, four months uh, after the Exodus. Moses received the instructions for the tabernacle. And what is God emphasizing? He says, I want to dwell with my people. I want to be with them. They will be with me through worship. So to maintain proper worship, follow everything according to the pattern as I am showing you and construct it exactly. And throughout Exodus, we see the diligence and obedience of Moses, who does exactly as God commands him. Now, this is just for reference. Uh, these are taken from the ninth book of the History of Redemption series. Uh, it is a general overview of the tabernacle. And you can see its details, the details of its arrangement, the holy place, the holy of holies, the veils that separate it, the various layers of tents that go above it, the altar of burnt offering, the laver, the arrangement, as well as the outer border that makes up the courtyard. This required a lot of work, a lot of craftsmanship, a lot of materials. So Moses, who received this at about the fourth month from the Exodus, God, who commanded him to construct it by the first of the year, it means that they were preparing for this moment. They were preparing for New Year's throughout the previous year. When we look at our own lives, how much of the last year have we truly been preparing for the true worship of God? As we're going into the new year, are we saying to ourselves, okay, another year has come and gone, and another year will come and will go? Are we approaching it with such simple thoughts and simple minds? But if we look at Israel, they physically had to prepare. They had to craft. They had to construct and build. They had to measure. They had to bake. They had to sew. They had to do all of these things. So throughout that year, they were living a life of worship as they were constructing the tabernacle. And in the new year, with everything put in place, they were able to worship in spirit and in truth according to the exact specifications that God had given. This is what the tabernacle represents. And this is what it means going into the new year. Now, it so happens that in our current calendars, that Christmas and New Year's is just one week apart from each other. I don't think that's a coincidence. It truly allows us to end the year with the appreciation of Jesus' gospel, that he came to earth to save us. And as we conclude the year with that celebration, we begin the new year on a spiritual foundation of the saving gospel. If we look at Matthew chapter 1, verses 21 through 23, uh, let's read this together. You may read it where you are and follow along as I read. From verse 21, she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. You see, Jesus' coming is the fulfillment of what? Of God being with his people. Now, if we go back to Exodus 25, why did God command the tabernacle to be built? It was so that he may be with his people, that he may dwell with them. 
that he will be their God and they will be his people. That was the purpose of the tabernacle. Now, in book nine of the History of Redemption series, which expounds upon the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant, the author, his son, Reverend Abraham Park, he declares that the tabernacle is called the gospel of the eyes. That was his nickname for the tabernacle, the gospel for the eyes. And why is that? See, this God, Jehovah, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who promised the people of Israel that they will have a land and a kingdom. Up until now, they've only heard about him. You see, all the other nations of the earth, they prepare idols of stone, of wood, of clay, of metal. And they worship these physical idols as if they were the actual God, because people must see something to believe. But God was different. He proclaimed himself through his word. The people only knew him by the promises that were told to them by mouth. And now, with the tabernacle, they're able to actually see some principle of God. You see, the tabernacle wasn't the form of God, but it represented God through worship. It represented how people interacted with God by their sacrifices, by their prayers, by their central worship that all of the nation engaged in. And because they were able to see the priests and actually through the priests partake in this worship with their own eyes, it is called the gospel of the eyes. And everything about the tabernacle, it doesn't present God like an idol. What it does is it testifies of God through the process of worship that the people can see with their own eyes. And that's why the tabernacle is called the gospel of the eyes. And it is a gospel of God dwelling with his people. And when we think of Christmas, we think of Emmanuel, God who is with us. But when Jesus came through Christmas, the first coming, what do we call it? We call it the incarnation, the word becoming flesh, God coming from heaven down to earth to be with his people in order to save them. That is what the incarnation is. And this is expressed in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14. And let's read this together. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, we have to look at the original Greek of this verse, particularly the word dwelt. It comes from the word skenoo, or skenao, which means to dwell in a tent or to tabernacle. So when the Apostle John is explaining Jesus as the word that became flesh, that dwelt among us, in the original language, what he's actually saying is that the word became flesh and tabernacle with us. You see, the Greek word for tabernacle is skene. It's talking about the same tabernacle. It's the same word used to describe the tabernacle of the Old Testament. So John is very deliberately saying that the tabernacle of the Old Testament, where God wanted to dwell with his people, as we read in Exodus chapter 25, that principle is realized through Jesus, the word that became flesh, who dwelt with us. We were tabernacling with him together. We were all together with him in the same, in the same tent. And what did we do? We saw his glory. So just as through the tabernacle of the Old Testament, Israel for the first time was able to see the glory of God's dwelling presence, the word that became flesh, Jesus fulfilled that testimony of the tabernacle through the incarnation, God who from heaven came down to earth, became flesh and dwelt with his people and taught us the true understanding of the scriptures. That is what it means to dwell with God in his tent. 
And this is going to be fulfilled in the last days. We are waiting for the Christ to come again, to perfectly fulfill that dwelling. And in Revelation chapter 21, verse 3, the new heavens and the new earth are fulfilled. And what is it that's being declared? And let's read this together. Revelation 21, 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle skene, of God is among men. He will dwell skenau, among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. So do we see the redemptive historical significance of the tabernacle? God showed it in the Old Testament. It testified of Jesus who is to come. It was realized through Christmas, the incarnation of the word becoming flesh. And it will be perfected when Christ comes again in the last day. The new heavens and the new earth. Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men and he will dwell among them. But this dwelling is different. You see, the first time that the Bible testified of God dwelling among men was through the tabernacle in the Old Testament. It was realized in the New Testament through Jesus Christ. But in this case, Jesus in the first coming, he was God in heaven who came down to earth. But in the last days, when Christ will come again to fulfill the second coming, what will he come to do? Yes, the word will descend. The trumpet will resound. Christ will come down from heaven, but what will take place? There will be a resurrection followed by the transfiguration. So what happens? We who are here on earth will ascend to be with God. We will meet him in the air. That is the fulfillment of the tabernacle. That is the redemptive historical fulfillment of God's dwelling place. And what did God command regarding the tabernacle? Even in the Old Testament, our last verse, let's read this to, together. Exodus chapter 40, verses 1 and 2. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month, you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. I remind you again, Moses did not do this according to his own timetable. Moses did this according to the command of God. By New Year's, erect the tabernacle. And what is the purpose of the tabernacle? For God to dwell with his people. And God is giving us the same command today. For the new year, construct the tabernacle. And as we see Moses' deeds, it continually says throughout Exodus 40, that Moses did as God commanded. Will we do the same? See, Moses wrote about Jesus. Everything that Moses did testifies of how Jesus is going to come. Even this command to erect the tabernacle. It is the command for us to prepare ourselves to meet our Lord who will come again. And when did God give this command? to be fulfilled on the first day of the first month. So for this New Year's of 2023, let us remember all of our struggles in the past year. Let us reflect on how we did not fulfill perfectly the word of God, just as Israel even sinned against God after the Exodus. Let us repent. And through this process of building the tabernacle, let us lay everything down. Let us be able to make our offerings to God. And by building the spiritual tabernacle, let us also spiritually see the glory of God so that we may testify of his word, of his glory from this new year. And may this new year of dwelling with God be with us always, and for this I bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. So let us pray. Our Heavenly Father God, we thank you so much for your love and for your grace. 
you have kept us over the last year and you have blessed us with this time of fellowship to settle our accounts for this year to truly repent and be able to build your tabernacle so that for the new year we can erect the spiritual tabernacle to dwell with you through your word and worship you in spirit and in truth father that you have given us this grace we give you all thanksgiving we give you all glory we give you all praise and we give you all the honor. Father God, the year of 2023 is upon us. As Moses was commanded to prepare the tabernacle and erect it for the first month of the first year, as new year comes, let us spiritually erect the tabernacle that is within our hearts. Let us be able to meet you so that we may dwell with you. And in dwelling with you, may we perpetually worship you in spirit and in truth, and may we carry this with us for the new year. May we be able to guide your sheep as proclaimers of the word of the history of redemption. So that in their lives of faith and for their spiritual year, they too will be able to build the tabernacle. So that they too, in the spiritual first month of the first year, will be able to meet you and see your glory. We pray, Father God that we can declare this gospel of Jesus always. May we, Father, as your spiritual priests, always worship you where you are. May we worship you in spirit and in truth, without any idolatry, without any corruption from the world. And may we look forward to the day of meeting you once again in the new heaven and the new earth, where it is declared that the tabernacle of God dwells among men, and you are with your people forever. We thank you so much. We pray all of this in the name of our true tabernacle, the Emmanuel, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Let us give Amen. our applause to glorify our God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Wow. It was a really powerful message. I think truly really, this is the power of redemptive historical perspective. So we're so blessed to be tabernacling with God. So thank you again, Pastor Jabez. Uh, any announcements? Uh, well, I trust everyone had a blessed Christmas. I trust that everyone, despite any difficulties that you will overcome with faith, uh, have a happy and blessed new year. Uh, as we spoke about in service today, uh, let us continually be building that tabernacle until it is perfected when we meet our Lord again. Uh, the spring term for 2023 will be from February 15th to May 15th. Uh, now many of our students had requested extensions, which we had granted. Uh, and again, uh, for anybody still studying uh, from the fall term, uh, if you're having any difficulties uh, or you need to uh, have any consultation, please reach out to uh, Professor Kim or myself, and we will certainly work with you. Uh, Evangelist, do you have any other announcements yourself? No, that's it for now. Okay. Um, if that is all, then let us have our benediction. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our true tabernacle that dwells with us forever. And the abounding love of our Father God, who declares us as his children and his people and the fellowship, inspiration, and indwelling of the Holy Spirit who brings us into the presence of God so that we may experience him and love him forever. Be upon all of the students, ministers, friends, and saints that have gathered here for the chapel at Berit Theological Seminary. This blessing be upon their families, their ministries, and upon your church that represents the tabernacle of the dwelling of God, for now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you all so much. Thank you, Reverend Jazz. Thank you. God bless every one of you. Thank you so much.